But the purpose of this epistle, what Paul is ministering to their faith is to bring about an effect. And the effect that Paul is bringing out in the Colossian is number one, he wants them to set their desires and affections upon the things that God has called them to inherit in Jesus Christ. Where's your affections? Where's your desires? What are you building? Are you building something for eternity or are you building something for this temporal life? Paul said, if ye be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. If I asked you to define those things, could you do it? Amen. And if not, you're lacking. You're not where you need to be. How can you obey a command you don't even understand? Then he says, set your affections on things above, not on the things of the earth. You say, what things is he talking about? You read Colossians 1? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers. You know what Paul's telling you? He's telling you to seek those things and set your affections on them. And in order to attain those things, you have to learn how to walk worthy of those things. And Paul goes on to say now, in light of that, he said, once you do this, then mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Put off all these wrath, anger, malice, filthy communication out of your mouth. Put on therefore as the elect, holy and beloved, Paul is ministering things to them, to their faith, to bring about a desired effect. Meaning if you believe Colossians, you understand it and you believe it, it's going to do something. It's going to take your desires and your affections and direct them elsewhere. And it's going to cause you to start mortifying your members that are upon this earth and begin to put on things in anticipation of that day of presentation to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So setting your affections and your desires, we'll put it like this. It is, desi it is designed to have an effect on your affections, bringing about a change in your walk. Amen? Amen? And so these things that Paul wants us to set our affections on are things that God has called us to inherit in Christ. We talk about this all the time, 2 Timothy 1, 9, God hath saved us and called us with a holy calling. He didn't just save you. That's where a lot of people stop. Amen? Amen. When, we, when, we, when we get raptured out, we've got an eternity. Do you understand? 2 Timothy 1.9 saved you and called you. Romans chapter 8, Corin hit it this morning, man. Romans is the whole gospel. Not just Jesus dying on a cross for you. Romans covers a lot of different doctrines. If I had to sum it up, number one, it is about the justification of sinners through the redemption that is in Christ. Number two, it is about the sanctification of servants by union with his resurrection. And number three, it is about through the Spirit. So when we talk about justification, we're talking about sins. When we talk about sanctification, we're talking about sin. The very law of sin in you. And how by our union to life with Him, we can be freed from that law of sin that's in our body. And then by the Spirit, those who walk after the Spirit, as many as walk after the Spirit, as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. We're talking about the glorification of sons one day. Justification of sinners, 
the sanctification of servants and the glorification of sons. That's our salvation. Yes, sir. That's right. And the reason God is doing that is because he gave you a holy calling in Christ that we're, going, that we're already participating in and there's going to be things in the future that God has called us to do also. Yes, sir. Amen? You know, you know what's wrong with Christians? You think Christianity is about the creature. Yep. My forgiveness, me going to heaven. That's right, yeah. It's like I said down at Stephen yesterday. Paul begins in Romans with them who worship and serve the creature more than the creator. And he ends Romans by telling you to mark them who serve their own belly and not the Lord Jesus Christ. Paganism just transitioned from Zeus to Christ. Churches all over America, buildings like this, plumb infested with pagans. You can tell it when you go in there because it's obsessed with you and right now. True biblical Christianity is obsessed with Jesus Christ and God. God has saved us, called us. So when we talk about the salvation, we are talking about the salvation of sinners, the sanctification of servants, and the glorification of sons. And then when you come into Ephesians, Paul begins with adoption. These sons right here that God redeemed, sanctified, and is going to glorify is in accordance to him predestinating us to adoption before the foundation of the world. To obtain an inheritance in Jesus Christ, amen, that's going, to, that's going to operate and fulfill a purpose that God has in the fullness of times. It is my belief that there is an eternal price to pay for those of us who have been called to be saints and sons who continue to walk after the flesh. An eternal price. Not hell. 1 Corinthians 3, reward, loss. This is Pauline doctrine. When that day comes, you're either going to receive, you're either going to receive reward or loss. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that we may receive for the things done in his body, whether good or bad. That means you're going to receive for bad done in his body. That includes using the telephone to try to tear ministries apart. I tell you what, tail bearing going to get a lot of people in trouble at the judgment seat of Christ. You know, one, one of the most precious things people have on this earth is a good name. And God pity the people that work overtime to try to destroy those things. Amen? They want to run around and talk about the love of the Lord. Galatians 5. You know what he said in Galatians 5? Those who do, do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Well, that's about lost people. You better read the context. Lost people don't have any choice but to walk after the flesh. Paul said, you walk after the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Right. The works of the flesh are manifest. Adultery, fornicate, on and on and on. And I've told you before, I told you before, and I'm telling you now again that those that do those things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Loss. They that sow to the flesh shall love the Spirit reap. Or those that sow to the flesh shall of the flesh reap. Those who sow to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap. Everlast, life everlasting. Everlasting life, right? Paul's epistles are full of this. 
We just, we just, because all we know is justification, we somehow want to apply all of this to justification. Amen. Philippians 3, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. Many walk of whom I've told you before and I'll tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is Paul's epistles are full of it. 1 Thessalonians 2 You are my joy and my crown in the presence of the Lord at His coming. You know what that means? My reward for the suffering my reward for the hours of study, I was up at 6 o'clock this morning. Went downstairs, wore out yesterday. Went and preached down at, down at Grantsville on about an hour and a half sleep. Came home, fell, just crashed on the couch at 7 o'clock. Woke up this morning, I said, I better get up and read my Bible. Amen. By 7.30, I was in tears. God overwhelming me with stuff. That's a stuff you never see. I don't care if you see it or not. God that sees secretly is going to reward me openly one day. But I tell you right now, my reward of the labor, the things I've suffered loss for, for Him, the reward of that labor is when I get to present my ministry and my work to Him one day. Amen. And I see other people's ministries burning up, going up in smoke. And mine standing there, standing gold, silver, and precious stones under the glory and praise of God. I ask all of you, hold it forth that I may rejoice in that day and that you may rejoice. Amen. You say, why do you get so worked up, preacher? It's getting better all the time, guys. Y'all be as excited as I was if y'all saw these things and understood these things. 1 Timothy 4, exercise thyself unto godliness. Why? A promise of life that now is and that which is to come. There's a promise to those who exercise. Amen? Vessels of honor, dishonor. It's all through Paul's epistles. And so this, this idea of setting your affections correctly and then preparing yourself for that calling is of utmost importance. And so what I hope to do is to give you some details here from Colossians chapter 1 and then show you why Paul is writing this epistle and what his prayer and desire for you was in understanding these things. Amen.